So let's give him some thanks in the word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, it's once more and again that your own servant bow before you. God, we come bow knowing that we have no strength of our own, but we're dependent on you. God, we look for you for everything because you are our helper. So we ask now, God, that you just intervene in our lives, that you intervene in our discussion this morning. God, make it what you would have it to be. God, we ask that it not only open hearts and open minds, but God, that it change lives, that somebody may hear a word from you. This is your servant prayer this morning, and we give you all praise and all thanks. Glory be unto God. Say amen. Amen. Once again, as I said, it's time for us to get into our discussion of God's Word. And we have before us on this morning, it is a new day, a new month, and a new unit of study. As we enter into this month of February, our unit theme is treasures in the Bible. Treasures in the Bible. And as you know, as the title indicates, that there are lots of treasures in the Bible, some that are still uncovered, no matter how well read you are. And so we're going to continue to discover these treasures in the Bible. And as we continue this unit of study, it is based on our yearly theme, of course, which is abiding in God. In this unit, we will offer some advice on what is needed in order for us to abide in the Lord. We realize that it's not enough to just know of God, but we must be in Him and He must be in us. The user's guide for abiding in God is the Holy Bible. In it is found the wisdom that we need to overcome the world and follow Christ. Man is constantly searching for treasures of gold and silver, but those items are nothing compared to the treasures found in the, in the word of God. All of these other things shall pass away, but only the word will last. So let's open up the treasure chest and pull out some valuable lessons to help us stay focused on God and his promises. Today is Sunday, February 6th, 2022. The year is swiftly rolling by. It seems as if we just celebrated New Year's, and already it is the month of February. God is telling us something. As this time continues to rapidly pass, we need to make sure that we take advantage of all the time that we have. Every hour and every minute is important because we don't know how long we'll be here. Our unit theme, once again, is treasures in the Bible. The lesson topic for today is fresh insights. Fresh insights. The key verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Again, that's, that is a lot. And hopefully you follow along with us on, with, in your Bibles. And as you look at this verse of scripture, there's a whole lot in there. But what it's telling us is that we should be thinking or concentrating on the good things. All those things are things that are desirable that was mentioned in this verse. And it says, uh, towards the end, it says, if there's any virtue. Virtue means a high moral standard. Meaning if you believe in living a moral life, if you have high moral standing, then you should think on these things and not necessarily spend so much time thinking about negative things. Especially in today's world, there's a lot of negativity. You don't have to look very far, very far to find it. But the, this verse is telling us that we should concentrate on the things of God, think about the good things, and then you won't be overly concerned about the problem. You won't be overwhelmed by the problems of today. Our essential question, do you realize that each day is a new opportunity to right that which is wrong in your life? 
Do you really realize that every day you have an opportunity to right whatever is wrong in your life? If you answer yes, then the second part of that question is, do you take advantage of those opportunities? Think about it. Our lesson aims. What do we hope to accomplish in today's discussion? At the end of this lesson, the participant will be able to, number one, look at life from more than one perspective. Number two, understand that life has its ups and downs. But if we lean on Jesus, he will give us what we need to make it through the down times. And number three, we will know that with each new day, God gives us the opportunity to make right that which is wrong in our lives that we've mentioned before. So we can begin each day with renewed faith and trust in him. Not in man, not in ourselves, but trust in him. Our introduction to today's lesson. As we mentioned in our lesson aim, life has its share of ups and downs. This lets us know that everything is not always going to be well with us. There will be some disappointments and some hard times. But the fact is, we should not be surprised or set aback by these difficult times. God did not tell us that our life was going to be easy just because we are believers. We often quote the scripture that says God allows rain, his rain to fall on the just as well as the unjust. Well, the same can be said when it comes to hardship and disappointment. When we talk about the good things of God and God bringing down the good things upon all people, not just the believers. And so when we go to the opposite of that and we talk about hardships and disappointments, the same thing applies. We are all subject to them, whether we are believers or not. Our purpose in today's lesson is to point out that it does not matter what you're going through in your personal life, but it's how you react to these situations. God allows us to go through hardship so we can become stronger. So learn to face each new day with fresh insights, because we know that God is still in charge. He will not desert us in our time of need. Our exposition. We will begin with the question, is the glass half full or half empty? The purpose of that question is to get you to look on the bright side. There are two sides of each corner. You can either look at the negative or you can look at the positive. It's a matter of perspective. Two people can look at the same situation or even be in the same situation and approach it completely different, depending on their point of view. So what we're really saying is that you can be an optimist. An optimist is a person who is hopeful and confident about the future. They expect success. And that's the key word there. If you are optimistic, you expect success. You think that everything is going to turn out to your benefit. We know that it doesn't always happen that way, but as long as you have that expectation, you have a, a good chance of coming through whatever it is that you need to go through. The opposite of that is a pessimist, and that's a person who sees the worst aspect of things. They believe that the worst will happen. No matter what the situation is, they believe that the worst is gonna happen. And when things are going good, they will tell you, oh, it's a matter of time, just wait. Trouble is right around the corner. Things are going to change for the worse. That's the pessimist. We gave them names like a negative Nelly, Doubt and Debit. Those are, are pessimists. You don't want to be in that group. It's a matter of perspective. Make good out of every situation. The old saying says if life gives you lemon, then make lemonade. Make something good out of it. The second point, you know, I think. Exposition. The dawning of a new day brings new opportunities. Old problems and issues should have died with the sunset. Don't take today's problem into tomorrow. Either resolve it or learn to live with it. Don't let it carry over. Pray the prayer of serenity. 
And I'm sure most of us remember the prayer of serenity. You ask God to give you the serenity to accept the things that you cannot change and the courage to change those things that you can, but the wisdom to know the difference. So when you get that wisdom and you're in a situation and you know you can't change the situation or even someone else that you know is going through a situation and you can't do anything to change the situation, learn to accept it as God's will. Pray about it. Pray for strength to get through it. And God will grant that to you. Don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Don't look at your problems through a telescope. Look at your problem through a telescope, not a microscope. There are people who take every little issue and they'll make something, something tragic out of it. It could be something simple with a simple solution, but they make it seem like more than it is. And the part about looking at your problem through a telescope, if you're looking through a telescope, you're looking at something that's far, far away. And it seems smaller than it is. But if you look through a microscope, then it makes it larger than it actually is. So look at your problem through a telescope, not a microscope. Don't make it bigger. Next point. Don't let your attitude determine your altitude. Say that again. Don't let your attitude determine your altitude. There are many people who could have gone much further in life if it was not for the attitude. When you think about your professional life or your career, there are promotions that are given and sometimes people have, are close to the same qualification. Who do you think would get the position? The one with the better attitude, the one that can work with other people. So don't let your attitude, your bad attitude, keep you from going where you can go in life. Not only that, don't let it keep you from where God wants you to go because your attitude can hinder that also. It hinders your spiritual growth as well as your physical growth. The next point, realize that every obstacle makes you stronger. Today's stumbling block may be tomorrow's stepping stone. I mentioned earlier, you gain strength through the struggle. So it may help you in the long run to go through these things. Bible says that we're tried in the fire. And if you tried in the fire, the only thing that's gonna come through is pure gold. So it makes you tougher when you go through these struggles. And the last point, take is a quote. It says, take the first step in faith. You don't need to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. And that's a quote from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. You don't have to know where God is taking you, where he is leading you. All he wants you to do is take that step in faith and then he will guide you to where he wants you to go. Some people are not gonna get involved unless they know what the outcome is gonna be. They have to see it. But you do faith is for the thing that you don't see. When God tells you something or gives you instruction and you don't quite understand, step out in faith. Fresh insight. Face things from a different perspective. That's the word of the morning. And that's what we're trying to get through in this discussion. Change your perspective. If you see things in a negative manner or you find yourself becoming negative about everything, change. Get a new perspective on things. And we'll continue that point as we go to the scripture for this morning. Words of wisdom from the Holy Writ. And we talked about treasures. There are so many of them. I just picked a few that were pertaining to getting a fresh insight and looking at things from a different perspective. Let's go to the book of Psalms 51. Verse 10, it says there, create in, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore me in the joy of salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Biblical scholars, you recognize that as the words of David. 
And this is after one of David's many sins. That we're not casting to Spurgeon on David because we're in the same boat. But this is after one of the times when David is repenting from the things that he did wrong in the eyes of God. A lot in there. First he said, create a clean heart, fresh start, fresh inside. Then he says, renew a right spirit, which indicates that at one time I was in step with God. But somewhere along the path, I made a misstep. I got out of the path of righteousness. Now he's saying, renew the right spirit in me. So again, if you find yourself slipping, you have the opportunity to ask God to renew you. Not only that, but he said, restore in me the joy of your salvation. Do you find sometimes that you, you think you're losing your job? You feel like the joy is gone? David asked the Lord to renew the joy of his salvation. Give me a fresh insight so I can re renew, so you can renew the joy in me. Next scripture, Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. This is God saying. And we talk about that fresh, looking at things anew each morning. If you read that scripture, and there are many others, but if you read that scripture or you pray that prayer at the beginning of the day, you find yourself with a fresh insight. Proverbs 3, 6, and 7. In all your ways, submit to him. He will make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. In other words, do it God's way. If you're going through a, a, a lot and you can't seem to find your way, maybe it's because you're trying to do it your way. Submit unto God. Let him lead you. Lamentation 3, 22 and 23. Because of God's great love, we're not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. The King James Version says he gave us new mercies every morning. His compassion never runs out. So every morning you get an opportunity to do things differently. Philippians 4 and 8. That was our uh, key verse of the day. And we mentioned those things that were mentioned there. This basically telling you to think on good things. So if you start out your day thinking of the goodness of God and the good things that he granted us, it gives you a fresh insight so you can face the day. Closing thought. Life is to be lived. Each of us must make a decision to be happy or to be sad. Life is to be lived, not to be dreamed. Life is a time, a new beginning, and ending. And that is a quote from Catherine uh, Falsa. Life, the lesson applied. Life with all its ups and downs, trials and tribulations can sometimes get us down. But in the midst of all the calamities, we want you to know that God is still there. He said that he will never leave us alone. So when life becomes too much, Take a step back and try a new approach. Read and meditate on God's word and face the problem with a fresh insight. If you take the things that we have discussed in today's lesson to heart, you will find that things are not bad as they seem. Looking through the eyes of God make everything look right. That's going to wrap it up for today. We ask you to continue to pray, continue to look to God, and continue looking at the world through God's eyes, fresh insight. God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon.